So I admit, I got very excited when I heard the theme of tonight was not education reform or reimagination, but revolution. I have the uh, weird honor of being one of the only people I think in the country who both graduated from high school and sued their high school all in about the same week. <laughs> now this was, uh, a little, this was a little out of character for me, to say the least. Going all the way back to kindergarten when I was in playing with blocks with my friends, I was trying to ace every test, please every teacher, get 100 on everything I possibly could. I considered it the crowning achievement of my childhood when in the first semester of my senior year, I beat out my best friend by one-tenth of a decimal point to become the class valedictorian. It was a very sad existence. And then something happened. Our high school principal censored our newspaper. Now by this time, I was already into college and like all of my friends, and so the game of high school was kind of over. And so we looked at each other and we said, are we gonna do something about this? And we said, we've got to, we've gotta do something about this. We had nothing to lose at this point. And so we took a stand and we said, you know what, you've gotta, you've gotta let us talk about, in this case, an article critical of the school's curriculum, which the principal said had no place in a public forum. He said it was, quote, antithetical to the school's pedagogical mission to discuss such things. <laughs> and so, much to my mom's horror, we hired the ACLU. We got a lawyer, this guy with a very long beard and a picket line protest singing band, and we served papers to our high school. We said, we're not gonna take this. Then, just to continue the trend that week, in my high school graduation speech, at the last second, I decided that I was going to give a passionate, passionate case against class rank, declaring that the entire system that had put me on top was a complete lie. Then I broke out at the end of my speech into a full-on, highly tone-deaf rendition of Can You Feel the Love Tonight? It was not what a valedictorian was supposed to do. Some people said I was losing it, but I was having fun. I had realized that this whole game that we were playing was kind of a lie, or at least it was very incomplete. And I realized something in that moment, that I am now on a mission to cause every single young person in the country to realize too, before it's too late, that just about everything we're taught about success is dead wrong. Schools, schools look at success too often as acquiring, memorizing information that you could just look up on Google. <laughs> Beating out your peers, putting other, making others small so that you can rise on top, so you can get the higher grade. Following the rules. But life looks at success so differently, if you think about it. Life looks at success as being curious and not acquiring information, but applying information to creatively solve really difficult problems. Life looks at success as collaborating with peers, inspiring them, bringing them up so together you can do something bigger than you could ever do alone. Life looks at success as actually breaking the rules, questioning every assumption, and when needed, when you find something that's not working, deciding to change it, to reinvent it. I believe that all of us who have come here tonight already know this. Over the last decade, something really significant has happened. We've kind of awakened as a society to the fact that schools are defining success in a very antiquated or incomplete way. There, we know that there is a global education crisis afoot. So tonight, I don't want to talk to you about the problem. I think we all kind of get it. I instead want to talk to you about the solution and about the possibility that that solution could be simpler than we may have thought. Our contention is that everything could change if schools suddenly began to, instead of inspiring and challenging students to achieve a diploma, challenge them to achieve big dreams. Imagine if every student were challenged 
to achieve something that truly matters to them, a passion, a purpose. Imagine if students graduated having in some small, specific, but transformational way changed the world. This is a mission that I'm not on alone. Over the past few years, thousands of us have come together across the whole country to do something about this. We call ourselves the Future Project. And we are now working with young people from San Francisco to Detroit, from Philadelphia to Newark, from New Haven to Washington, DC, to right here in New York City. We are working with young people who are amazing me every single day by the incredible projects that they build when they realize that they actually have it in them to achieve incredible things. Students like Kayla Marte. Kayla Marte grew up in East Harlem. And she went to a school right around the block from here that had been called a failing school. Now, this may have been true. But what she realized, it was a brilliant insight, was that the students in her school were suddenly marking themselves as failures as a result of this. The state had almost given up on them. She decided she had to do something about this. So she lodged protests. She assembled with friends a group of people to stage rallies. She ended up with an article in the New York Times. And she failed. Because that's what happens sometimes when you go out and pursue big dreams. And that's exactly the point. But she stood back up, and she came up with something even better, something called Restart Day. She brought her entire school together and said, no matter what's going on with what the government says, we are all going to decide to restart our school culture. She brought in motivational speakers. She had students share their most vulnerable thoughts. She had students make new commitments to the future of their dreams, even if they felt hopeless. It was transformational. She was so inspiring as she did this. And now she's on a mission to restart the cultures of failing schools all across the country. She continued this journey last year by interning for the Federal Department of Education. She wants to be the Secretary of Education one day. <laughs> students, <laughs> young dreamers like D'Angelo Hughes inspire me as well. D'Angelo when he was just 15 years old, growing up in the east side of Detroit, experienced unthinkable tragedy in his life. By that time in his life, his mother had passed away from a long illness. He had lost his brother, in essence, to a lifelong sentence in prison. Another of his brothers had been murdered. There were moments where D'Angelo didn't even know why he was living, let alone in school. Then. He was inspired one day by another student, Renica, here in New York City, who also had suffered loss and created something called Flutter. So he decided to start a Flutter chapter in Detroit. Now, D'Angelo is on a mission to ensure that every single young person, because he realized this, this problem was not being solved in his community, has a support group when they suffer overwhelming grief. Just six weeks ago, D'Angelo filed his 501c3 papers, and now he's on a mission to bring Flutter to all of Detroit. And I've got a surprise for you. Kayla and D'Angelo are here in the audience tonight. <laughs> I love these stories. I love these stories and the um, thousands more of young people who create books, make films, start documentaries, create movements in their schools, start clubs that start turning around elements of their school, create plays that cause students to start expressing themselves in new ways, build products. The list goes on and on and on because there are infinite passions in the world that young people, when they're fully inspired in school, can pursue. These students most excitingly, don't just do this for themselves. They become agents of inspiration for their peers until students all throughout their school are following their example. But the thing that I really love talking about is the how of all of this. When we started the Future Project, we asked ourselves 
a different kind of question about the solution. We, we were inspired by examples of new schools that had been created, by sweeping policy changes that had been made, but we were impatient. And we said, how could we create something that once we kind of really got it right, could scale to not just every high school in this country, but ultimately every school in the world, period, because the scale of the problem we're talking about is billions and billions of young people. So we realized as we did this investigation, working with our students in our first year, that the core cast of characters had not been reinvented in school, truly, since the guidance counselor more than a century ago. So we did the only thing we knew how to do, we invented a new profession called the Dream Director. The Dream Director was inspired by Willy Wonka, Mary Poppins, Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman, the most exciting, inspirational teacher or coach or mentor or leader you've ever witnessed who's ever made a difference for you. We said, what if you could package all this together in one human being? What if you could put those human beings in schools all across the world, not just to unlock the potential of young people, but also of guidance counselors, of custodians in that school, of teachers, of the principal. These dream directors are now in schools from coast to coast. But what's most exciting to me is the response has been overwhelming and far more than we ever realized it could be. We now have thousands of people who are saying they want to be dream directors for the rest of their lives. We have young people who are saying they want to aspire to be a dream director when they grow up. We have teachers in almost all 50 states now who have said they want to bring the methodology of dream directing to their classroom because this is why they got into teaching and education in the first place. We have schools who are beginning to put passion and purpose in the achievement of big dreams as requirements, as the point of graduating because this is what makes for a great, great life. And tonight I'm excited to announce that by the end of this year, we will be launching a website fittingly called dream.org where any young person and any school in the world can access a dream director. We believe that this is a big deal because if you think about it, thank you. <laughs> At least you know we'll have one, one visitor to the site. <laughs> dream.org for those of you who didn't hear it. So, this is a big deal, we think. Because, <laughs> because we are facing, it's not been called this, but we are facing, we think, a dream depression in this country. It's not like the Great Depression, where people put money under their mattress. It's the dream depression. They're putting something that matters even more to them under the mattress, their dreams. Young people for the first time in America's history, the statistics are showing, don't believe, just consider this for a moment, don't believe that the future will be better than today. This is unconscionable. And the source of it, we believe, is not a person, not an educator. You can't blame anyone, no politician. It's a system. And it's a system we all have the chance to change together. It's the school system, which programs young people to pursue a vision of success that is not aligned with true success in life. We teach algebra, but not the art of aspiration. And then we wonder why well, we all have so much trouble dreaming beyond our circumstance. We teach students how to critically think, but then we ask them to apply that critical thinking to passages on tests as opposed to real problems in their community. And we wonder why the world seems so stuck. We tell students that the biggest accomplishment they can have growing up is getting that diploma, as opposed to figuring out something that truly matters to them, a big dream. And even if it's gonna take some trial and error and many, many mistakes and overcoming so much hardship, achieving a really, really big dream. And then we wonder why so, much of, so many of us later in life feel like we never really lived, never really pursued the biggest dreams that matter to us. I think that we can do better. I think that tonight we can do better. All of us in our own ways can step up as dream directors. 
We can think of that young person who we know who we can push just a little bit harder because dream directors don't just come with answers, but with questions. Questions that all of you are capable of asking. What really excites you? What change do you want to see in the world? What action do you want to take by the end of today to make a better world? What skill are you dying to learn? What's your true purpose in life? We can all step up as dream directors. But we can also hatch a dream tonight of our own. We can define the education revolution as that revolution that causes a whole system to make it possible for every young person to figure out how to achieve any big possibility, not just in school, but for the rest of their lives. And I predict that will not only lead to an education revolution that all of us will help to lead. This kind of education revolution will be led by the young people themselves. That's the power of it. And all the rest of us will watch as they awaken to their innate power to change the world before they even turn 18. And we will proudly follow those young people as they lead us toward, toward achieving the collective future of our dreams. Thank you. <laughs>